I know that you came back to a profit, uh, but it was a little bit below what the street was anticipating. What, what happened with the numbers? Yeah, well, we were actually had a consensus. Uh, consensus was about 157 uh, million euro. We we committed 170 million euro pre-exceptional items, but Easter was impacted uh, by the uh, Russian invasion of Ukraine. That had an impact on floats and bookings, and indeed, average fares were down four uh, percent in in the quarter. Uh, below where they were in pre-COVID levels. But when we look beyond that, we, we've reallocated uh, capacity over the summer. Bookings are, are very strong. Uh, we had a 95% load factor, for example, uh, in June. We had 92% in the quarter. And I'd be disappointed if we weren't somewhere up around 95 96% for July. Uh, we're, we're seeing uh, fares tracking ahead into the second quarter of the year, uh, low double digits. Um, so th things are coming back. I think the second quarter will be good, but there's still a lot of unknowns into the third and fourth quarter. What unknowns are you talking about? The, the resurgence of COVID, potential shutdowns with things? I know that's been an issue that you all have been kind of concerned about in the past, just not knowing uh, what, what the next term will be with the pandemic. Yeah, I'd be hopeful that given the high level of vaccinations across Europe and elsewhere that we won't see a uh, resurgence of COVID. But that said, we all remember Omicron came out of the blue last November. So I think it's right to be somewhat cautious that there could be another variant uh, this winter. Equally, uh, you know, we remain cautious as to what may happen uh, with Ukraine. If, if, if it remains contained uh, within Ukraine, then I think we'll continue to see uh, Central and Eastern Europe booking strongly uh, for the remainder of the year. But there's just a, a lot of unknowns with a very volatile oil prices. Um, and, you know, I, I think it's, it's it's right to be cautious, albeit that we're 80% hedged into the second half of this year. Uh, Neil, we heard uh, about Heathrow, and that's pretty amazing uh, that, that these are the times we're living in. But I'm also hearing, and, you know, we had a pretty good good presence, uh, presence at the at the Open, the ne all the networks did. And I've heard some horror stories about lost luggage uh, in, uh, in Scotland, Ireland, just an absolute mess at, at Ryanair. You, can you comment on that? Is it what happened? Is it fixed? Is it well, like I, I can comment there at Ryanair. We don't fly into a lot of those airports that you actually referred to, Joe. Uh, we, we've been operating very well this summer. In fact, we, we're the only airline in Europe that was fully staffed up. Uh, ahead of summer 22. So it was other decision. airlines that, that were talking about it, it, it but you've heard it's, about it's that. It's other airlines, yeah. I mean, our passengers, in fairness, uh, they, they tend to carry their own bag on board, so the chance of losing it is pretty slim. Um, so we, we've been operating pretty much all of our schedules. In fact, we're operating 115% off capacity that we had pre-COVID uniquely in Europe. Uh, where we have had issues this summer is on air traffic control. And unfortunately, air traffic controllers uh, continue to do what, the, what they've done in the past. They, they're continuing to strike in places like France, in Italy, uh, and, and, and uh, leading to delays and disruptions for people. But we're finishing uh, our flights. Uh, we, we expect to operate 100% of our schedule. Uh, there will be some delays, but people are getting there. And as I said, our, our customers are well trained, so they, they're, they're, they're not losing bags. Neil, you are one of Europe's best hedged um, airlines, just in terms of, of being able to have those hedges deal with some of these higher prices. But it, the high prices at this point have to be getting to even you. How do you kind of look out, because we've had such high prices for such a long time, how do you look out into next year and see how that will impact operations? Yeah, well, as you said, we, we are the best hedged airline in Europe. Uh, we're, we're hedging just over $60 a barrel uh, for the remainder of this financial year at the next March. And we've started putting cover in place into into next year, our financial year ending March 2024. So we've about 35% uh, cover at just over $90 a barrel at, at this point in time. Um, so, you know, we, we believe we've got a huge competitive advantage into the winter. That said, the 20% the unhedged fuel uh, will will uh, take the brunt of higher fuel costs. But I think the given the market share that we have, given the amount of capacity that's out of the market, I think it's inevitable that we'd be able to recover much of this through higher fares. Ancillaries continue to perform well. We, we generated €22.50 per passenger in ancillary revenue when the quarter just ended again. We would expect that to continue uh, to perform strongly. And, and that's the likes of priority boarding, reserved seating, and indeed uh, onboard uh, spend, the likes of teas and coffees and paninis, of which we, you know, we're the largest seller of ham and cheese paninis in Europe. Shepard Smith here. Thanks for watching CNBC on YouTube.